Hey, well, there we are. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning. Whenever you're watching this, it's great to have you with us today. It's great to be on Facebook Live and, and just bring the Word of God. So, uh, hello and welcome to uh, Elijah's Home and Ministry, our Friday uh, edition. And uh, I hope you're having a great day. Looking forward to having a great weekend, a little bit warmer. Isn't the weather great? I mean, I'll take 50s any day in the end of January. So this is just great. Enjoying it. I hope you are too. Uh, today we're going to be, I'm going to be in uh, the book of Judges. So if you want to get your Bible or just follow along, I'll be in the book of Judges, actually chapter 6 today. Um, and uh, today I was, um, I was thinking we all, we all have our favorite Bible characters. Do you have your favorite Bible character, um, David, Saul, Paul, John, whoever, uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe it's because we can relate to some of the things they go through, some of the mistakes they made in their lives and, and how they work through that and, and how God brought them through things. And, but for whatever reason, uh, they teach us something, don't they? Um, especially in the Old Testament, there's so many stories, so many characters. They teach us something. Uh, sometimes, as me as today, uh, we go back to that character numerous times uh, to see what we can glean from their lives again. So, uh, while one of mine... One of my favorite Bible characters is Gideon, and uh, you might have been, might have heard sermons about Gideon, uh, Judges chapter six through chapter eight, or chapter nine, and uh, all the things that he went through and how God got him started, and uh, maybe, or maybe I can relate to his life, his start. Um, he was, uh, as we're going to look at in a couple minutes, he was hiding from, from the Midianites, or was he hiding from God? We're going to find out. We're going to look at some things. Uh, two things about Gideon before we get started. And the Israelites, they were, number one, they were fearful and they were disobedient. Um, usually, we, we, we know in chapter 6, verse 11, that um, or that verse nine uh, or verse eleven, that Gideon was was threshing wheat in a wine press. Now you might read that and think, well, so what? But you don't thresh wheat in a wine press. You thresh wheat in open air, where the where the breeze or the wind can carry the chaff away. So so Gideon was hiding. Now the question is, was he was he hiding and fearful? of the Midianites or was he hiding and fearful because they were disobedient to God? We're going to look at that and several other things today. The life of, of, of Gideon, I just love it. So I went back there this week and uh, if you're in your Bibles or you just want to follow along, that's okay. Uh, Judges chapter 6 and I'm going to read uh, verses 7 through 10 to start out with. Listen to this. And it came to pass uh, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites. And we're going to look at why a little bit later. But verse 8 says that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you. And drove them out before you and gave you their land. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. So here we get a hint of what's going on here that, that uh, God heard their cry. He came to them through a prophet. And said, this is what I, I, I did in the past, and, and I haven't changed. 
I haven't changed, uh, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. The end of verse 10, we just read it. He says, um, but you have not obeyed my voice. So what we, we see the, the main problem is they were disobedient to God, weren't they? They were disobedient to God's voice. Um, so they had an obedience problem that led them to be de defeated and fearful. And the Lord wanted to correct this through this unassuming young man named Gideon. And uh, he, he tried to get Gideon to, to follow him. And we're going to look at some of the things he said. And, and some of the things that I gleaned out of these this first chapter about Gideon. And we'll just see where God takes us today. Um, the Lord wanted to correct their disobedience through Gideon and lead them to victory. So the Lord... The Lord heard their cry in verse 7. We just read that. He heard their cry and he wanted to turn their situation around through this man, Gideon. Um, look at verse 12 if you have a Bible. Um, so Gideon was, was threshing wheat in the wine press. And we, you know, we, we don't thresh wheat in a wine press. So he was hiding and he was fearful. So if you want to follow along, look at. Judges chapter 6, verse 12, look at it. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, man, it would take a half an hour to, ta to just to tear that apart. But can you imagine the angel of the Lord coming down, standing before Gideon and saying, Gideon, this is who God sees you to be. He's a, you're a mighty man of valor. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine if God said that to you or an I? Uh, actually, he does through the New Testament. We're going to look at a couple things. But a few, I have a few thoughts here. A few thoughts about just this one uh, 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 paragraph here in, in chapter 12. Um, number one, few thoughts. Number one, when God sees us, he sees the final product, not, not the mess we've made out of our life. So Gideon, or the, the Lord saw Gideon hiding, fearful, obviously defeated from seven years of being under oppression from the Midianites. But uh, God saw him. God saw his past. But God saw who Gideon was supposed to be. Because God sees the future as well as he's seen our past. But you know what? Thank God he doesn't, he doesn't look to our past to determine our future. Amen? Thank God. I mean, in my case, if he looked to my past to determine if I'd be here today... I, I would not be here today. Amen. A lot of you could say amen to that too. But but uh, sure, Israel had made mistakes. Don't get me wrong. Just like we, but but God was saying, Gideon was, God was saying to Gideon, um, let's get going. Let, let's go forward. Let's win this. Let your past uh, be in the past and um, uh, be the overcomer. See what he was saying to Gideon? Let, 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 look, this is who I've created you to be. Be the overcomer. Be the mighty man of valor that I have created you to be. Because, look, the Lord is cons more concerned about where we, were go we are going than where we came from. Amen? Too many times we can be tethered to our past. Amen. We can be tethered to our past and never be able to move forward and do great things for God. Amen. And when I say tethered to our past, I think about um, we've all played tether ball. Amen. Remember that 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 uh, volleyball sized ball that was uh, on a rope tied to the top of a pole and you would hit it around the pole. And, uh, but that's what being tethered is. Never being able to be free 
never being able to move forward in our life, always be be tethered to our past mistakes and past failures. You know, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about and what made me think about this. I don't know, but when I was about um, nine or ten years old, uh, we lived in, in this city, and there was a a, a stone alley behind us. And uh, we had a basketball hoop up there. wasn't much room, and uh, I didn't see it, but there was a a nail sticking out of the building. And one day we were playing basketball. I jumped up, I came down, and caught my my uh, right leg on this nail and ripped the side of my leg right open. I had, I think I had 13 stitches in my leg. And you know, there's times. There have been a couple times. That I when well, we've been in in York and I've I've made a detour through the city and and back to where we used to live and um, up that alley where that nail used to stick it's not sticking out anymore but I was thinking why do I keep going back I'm not, I don't live here anymore you see that I don't live here anymore and that's way with us with our past we don't live there anymore. Why look through the rearview mirror and see what we used to do, what we used to be, when God says, press towards the mark of the high calling of God. Amen. Us being tethered to our past is not going to get us to the high calling of God where he's calling us to be. We, we have got to let go of those mental pictures of our past sins and failures amen a lot of us can a lot of you can relate to that i i still you know after all these years i still struggle i still struggle at time to times with some things that uh that i did in the past that i knew was wrong and but you know but god has forgiven me of that he has blessed my life so much and he has moved me to where i am today now if he would consider my past to, to determine my future or where I'm at today, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be either. I know you wouldn't. And I know you're thinking the same thing I would, but God is good and he's good all the time. Amen. Uh, but we need to forget what God forgets and remember what God remembers. Amen. Uh, also uh, about this verse, and I hate to dwell on this guy Gideon, but also Gideon, like us, like me, uh, had an identity problem. Had an identity problem because of fear, because of doubt, because of hiding. Gideon saw himself as already defeated. I mean, he went through seven years of of oppression and defeat from the hands of the Midian or the yeah the the uh, the Midianites. That uh, he just thought, well, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm not that person. Who you say I am, I, I'm, I'm just a defeated little uh, wheat thresher uh, trying to get my job done and not be noticed. Uh, you know what it reminds me of, and I hate to go back to this, but uh, it reminds me of, of the movie The Lion King. Yeah, The Lion King. Remember Simba? Uh, he was the young lion, uh, the cub, and uh, uh, his father died and he was told, well, it's all your fault. Remember, he was told that it was all your fault. So what happened? Simba ran. Uh, and it, what it, the guilt of thinking it was his fault uh, drove him away from, from his rightful place as the king of the pride. And what did he do? Come on, we remember the story. He, he hung around with, with two guys that, that uh, just that took him... Uh, further away from where he was supposed to be. These guys uh, didn't help uh, Simba at all until, remember the story, I can't go into all of it, remember the story, he finally went back and stood up to his past. Remember what he did? He stood up to his past and took his rightful place as being king. And, you know, I was thinking also about this. Isn't that what the enemy of our souls wants? He wants us to believe that because of our past, we'll never have a bright future in God. He gets us to question God, uh, live in 
our past mistakes, our past sins, cloud our future, that we that we can never move forward. You know, I talk to people all the time, they, they just keep going back to their past sins, their past mistakes, they just can't move forward in God. They try church, they try religion, uh, which is their first mistake. You don't try religion. Uh, you trust Jesus. Amen. But you know, the, we just get tethered to our past. Amen. So uh, just the opposite of how God sees us. Amen. God sees us as being redeemed. Amen. Forgiven. Uh, his, his sons and daughters, a child of God. Amen. A joint heir with Jesus. There are so many uh, descriptions that God sees us as, but uh, but we've got to let go of our past. And we're going to look at Gideon, who God says, look, Gideon, this is who I see you. I see you as what? A mighty man of valor or a man of honor or a bright man of, of bravery, a man of courage, a man of truth, a man of honesty. And isn't that who God sees us? And really, it's his purpose for us to be a mighty man of of valor. So let's move forward. Let's go on to verse 13. Listen to what it says. Gideon said to him, you're exactly right. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of being under. I'm, I want to be over. I want to be an overcomer. But no, he didn't say that, did he? He didn't see that, say that. Look at what he said. Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then he all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles? People say that today. Can you imagine that? People say, well, miracles don't happen anymore. That was, uh, that was in, in the Bible. God doesn't do miracles anymore. It's actually people that say that. But he says, where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us. And delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And while this is true, we can look back to verse 1, where it says that, that God, because of their disobedience, delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. So that is true. They had a disobedient problem. Um, um, but, but because of their repentance that we read in verse 7, God wanted to take them forward. God said, okay, you've repented. I heard your cry, just like the children of Israel when they were in bondage for 430 years. God heard their cry and he came down and chose Moses to lead them out into their promised land. But Gideon, Gideon had a pretty pity party, didn't he? Gideon had a pity party says, well, why aren't you with us? And this whole thing he said, uh, but verse 14, in verse 14 of chapter 6, uh, the Lord uh, once again tried to redirect Gideon into who God wanted him to be and where God wanted him to go. Amen. Look at verse 14, if you will, or just listen along. Then the Lord turned to him, turned to Gideon, and said, Go in this in the in this might of yours. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? You see that there? Have I not sent you? In other words, and first of all, he called him a mighty man. Go in this might of yours. Same thing he called him mighty man of valor. So go in this might. Go in this might. Uh, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites because why? I have sent you. Now, when I was when I read this again, all of a sudden I started thinking of Joshua. Remember Joshua in Joshua chapter nine. Um, remember what God said to Joshua: "Have I not commanded you?" But He said to Gideon, "Have I not sent you?" The same thing. Same Gideon's purpose. Was as was as well was as as the same thing as Joshua's purpose was clear to lead God's people out of seven years of bondage. You see that Gideon, I'm sending you to lead your people Israel 
out of the hand of the Midianites. You were in bondage for seven years, not nearly as many as 430. But isn't this the same? Uh, Joshua was to lead them into the promised land. Moses was to lead them out of bondage. And, and God said, Gideon, go in the might that I've given you and lead your people free. But you know what? I was thinking, um, don't we all have the same calling and the same purpose? Let me explain. Don't we all have the same calling and the same purpose as, let's say, Gideon? We've been delivered. Listen, we've been delivered out of, out of the bondage of our sin, bondage of our past. So we're called, we're actually called by God to lead others out of the bondage of sin. So if you want to look at yourself this way or not, but we're called to be um, a leader. We're all called to be leaders, to lead people out of their sins. Too many people say, well, they need to come to church to get that done. They need to go to one altar to get that done. Listen, I know people got saved in a bathroom. I know people that got saved uh, in, in different places that you would have never guessed. They didn't get saved at an altar in a church. They heard God's voice and God's calling um, to repent of their sins in different places. Amen. I repented of my sins in a, in a, in a, in a, in a revival in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I didn't go there to be saved. I had no idea that I was going to be saved that day. But when I went into that revival, um, I, heard, I heard the word of God. And the word of God touched my heart. The spirit of God drew me into the presence of the Lord. And I had no alternative. You know, you, you said, well, you didn't have to get saved that day. Yes, I did. If I didn't get saved that day, I thought my heart was going to explode. You know, when you were, you heard the story before, you know, and I got saved that day. I got saved that day, and I know I did. Did I work with, walk with God for a while? No, it took about, it took a while. It took a while to actually walk with God. But you know what? I got saved that day, and I know I did. And Gideon's purpose, my purpose, if you're a Christian today, your purpose is to lead people out of their the bondage of their sin. How do we do that? Look, this is, this is what God did for me. Look, I don't know about you. I don't know where you're at. Maybe you do know where people are at. But this is what God did for me. This is how he, 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 he loved me enough to forgive me of my sins and wash them away. It made me a new person. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. See, that's as simple as that. Leading people out of the bondage of their sins. We've been delivered. So we're called to lead people out of the bondage of sin. Amen. Let's keep reading. Let's keep moving. Uh, we could go on about Gideon and all that, but let's keep reading. I'm going to read verse 15 through 21. Listen to what it says. So he said to him, Gideon said to, to the angel of the Lord, Oh my Lord, how can... I save Israel. Here's the pity party again. Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. Uh, who's it remind you of? Sure, it reminds you of David. Remember, uh, um, David was the, the, the youngest and the littlest out of all his brothers. But God called David. He doesn't look at our size. Amen. He doesn't look how our stature, he doesn't look, look at what we've accomplished in life. He's, he looks like, looks at our heart and he sees us who he has created us to be. He saw David when he was a ruddy, redheaded boy uh, tending the sheep, but his plans and purposes were so big for David. I'm sure David didn't see it at first. I didn't see where God was taking me at first. But God has been so good to me, just like he was with Gideon, with, with Moses, the stutter, with, with all the other leaders in the Old Testament. Look, he took them from, from who they used to be 
to do great things for for God, for the Lord. So Gideon says, look, I'm the least, I'm the littlest. I don't know, maybe he had freckles, maybe he had pimples. I don't know, whatever his problem was. But Gideon said, I can't do it because I'm the littlest. But let's go on. And the Lord said to him, imagine his back and forth with the angel of the Lord. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you. And you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. You shall de defeat the Midian. Can, can you mind you? This was the angel of the Lord standing talking to to, to Gideon, and back and forth. And Gideon, oh, I can't do this. Where have you been? And we've been in bondage. And and the and the uh, the the pity party and the and the the whining that Gideon did. So wonder the angel of the Lord said didn't say never mind. I'll get one of your other brothers or I'll get somebody else. But he didn't. He didn't give up on Gideon. Just like he didn't give up on me when I might have strayed or you when you strayed or, or whatever backslid or whatever that word is. God never gave up on us. Amen. God never gives. He's the God of the second chance, the hundredth chance. You know, he never, never gives up on us. His love will be the same as today as it is when you stray from him. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. And what an example here. Gideon, you know, I imagine by this time the angel of the Lord's thinking, oh my goodness, this kid. But he didn't. He never gave up. He said, now if, um, I will be with you. Look, you just go. My presence will be with you. Amen. And that's what he says to us doesn't he? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Giddy kept harping on his inability to accomplish anything for God. And it really, I mean, it, it really sounds like me and some other people I know. I'll never do anything for God. I'm just this. I was just a factory worker. I'm this, you know, whatever. But God says, I don't see you as who you used to be. I see you as a mighty man of valor, as who you are going to be, my purpose for your life. And mind you, he's speaking. Yeah, he's speaking to the angel of the Lord, but God never gave up on him. Man. The, um, most would be thrilled to talk to the angel of the Lord. Um, some people believe this was the Lord himself. We don't know. But finally said, look, I'm going to be with you. Don't worry. What are you worried about? This is me. Amen. This is the I'm the angel of the Lord. Why do you why are you worried? Um, um, some promise. The same promise he makes to us. Amen. Same promise he makes to us. I'll never leave you nor forsake you until finally, finally Gideon gives in. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Then he said to him, Gideon said to the angel of the Lord, verse 17, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. So Gideon wanted the angel of the Lord to paint a picture in the sky, write it in pink letters in the sky. I mean, how many of us have done that? God, if this is really you, cause this to happen. In other words, we want to fleece, as you could read later on in the life of Gideon. But uh, um, this, the, geez, it reminds me, let me go back here, said that it is you who talk with me. In other words, I'm still not sure it's you. And you know who it reminds me of when I was reading it? It reminds me of Peter. Remember when Jesus came walking on the water? And uh, um, they were scared and they thought it was a ghost or whatever. And uh, Jesus said, look, settle down. It's me. It is I. I mean, Jesus said, it is I. And what does Peter say? Lord, if it is you, Jesus just said, it is I. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, oh my goodness bid me to come to you. So we all know the story. Peter walked on the water. Um, but this is where, this is where I want to end today. I want to, don't want to go real long and we're going to finish up or do more this next week, but this is where I want to end. 
uh, today in verse 18. Look at verse 18. So He said, do not depart from here. Gideon is telling the angel of the Lord, do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. And we're going to stop here today. And I want to ask you a question because everything changes. If you can, I know you're going to keep reading and we're going to look into this next week. Everything changes when Gideon goes to get an offering. Um, um, nothing changed until Gideon brought an offering to the Lord. Gideon brought the Lord an offering or a sacrifice. My question in just a little closing here, um, uh, what is your offering to the Lord? I'm not talking about going out and killing a rabbit or whatever, bringing an animal like they have to do in the Old Testament. I'm thinking about what the Bible says about us bringing an offering to the Lord. And if you're thinking about the same thing that I thought about, I thought about Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Amen. Remember that says Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Listen to what it says. It says, Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, which is your reasonable service. And it's a, or a living sacrifice to God. So what is your sacrifice to God? The only thing that's going to die here in our sacrifice to God is our will, surrendering it to the will of God. Have we sacrificed our will to the will of God? Have we done that? Paul said, the apostle Paul says, I die daily. Now we all know that he didn't die physically daily. He died to himself daily. He wanted God's will done in his life so badly that he, he says, I die daily. I die to my, my own will daily so the will of the Lord can be done. You see, before the Lord can use us, before the Lord can use us for his glory, the only, the only way that can happen is if we died to our flesh and surrender it all to God. Amen. And that we could look at scripture after scripture that talks about us dying and surrendering our flesh to God. Uh, that way, when God does something through us, he gets all the glory. Yeah, we can we can do things for God. We, well, look what I did for God and, and look what I did for God. I know people like that and you do too. But you know what? Who got the glory there? I remember, it, look what I did for God. But you know what? If God gets the glory, then we realize that, that God did it through me. It was his strength. It was his will being done, not ours. Jesus, Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice, didn't he? He made the ultimate sacrifice by laying down his life and dying on the cross. So our first surrender, our first sacrifice is is surrendering to his lordship amen if you have never uh, accepted christ as your personal savior if if you have never surrendered to his lordship and that today is the best day to do it because the, the day could be the first day of the rest of your life amen um, and surrendering our lives to god amen you're not watching this by chance or by just by chance but it's by by, by the sovereign and divine will of God that you're watching this today. Amen. So have you brought your sacrifice? Even if you're a Christian today, have you sacrificed your body to God? Not that you have to die, but you have to die to yourself. Amen. Have you done that lately? Nothing changed here in Gideon's life. And we're going to see that next week. Nothing changed in Gideon's life until he brought the Lord a sacrifice. Listen, nothing's going to change in our life until we, we, like we said, we present our bodies a living sacrifice to God. 
which is the Bible says our reasonable service. Amen. So Gideon changed. We're going to see that next week. We change when we die to ourselves. We die to our flesh and our, our will. God, your will be done and not mine. And see how God uses us. See how God uses us for his honor and glory. Dying to our will and taking on his will. His will be done and not mine. Amen. Isn't that what Jesus said? So that should be our desire as well. To live in the will of God. There's no better place to be. No safer place to be than in the will of God. Amen. You can be there to if you accept Christ as your personal Savior, or if you're a Christian, lay down your life. Lay down your life before God. Say, God, I know I've messed up my life. I tried everything that I could to do things on my own, but I just can't do it. I have no peace. I have no strength. Nothing seems to be working out. I have to give my life to you. Have you done that today? Have you done it lately? Maybe it's been a year, two years, three years, whatever. But God's waiting on you. You haven't heard this by accident or but just by chance. But God's drawing you into himself. Have you sacrificed your life to God today so he can use you for his honor and glory? That's what happened to Gideon. We're going to look at it next week and we're going to see what happened in Gideon's life. And something that surprising happened that Gideon said to God that can happen to us as well. We're going to look at that next week and uh, praise God. We're going to see what happens. And you have a great night. Have a great weekend. And uh, all glory to God. Amen.